Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And I'm Helena. And today we're joined by a very special guest for the ending of Shrek Temper. Just as a nice little treat, we're joined by Mac. It's me, Mac, and a hat. Is that your new handle? Oh, why are you in it? <laughs> That's come. I was just my person boot style name. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good point. <laughs> I'm Helena in a. Selena. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lovely wrestling reference there. <laughs> I was going to say halter neck, but I can't think of any H clothes. Hat. <laughs> yeah, but you, you took yeah. that. Yeah, puss in boots isn't puss in poots. True. No, it's <laughs> okay. just... I'm Helena in a red t-shirt. <laughs> I'm Dan, I'm in my pyjamas. What movie are we watching today? It's quarter to eight. Why are you in your pyjamas? Hey. It, are you ill? Work clothes. No. Sometimes you just don't get out of them all day and it's fine. Do you have uh, Do you have monogram pyjamas, Dan? Are these like, just like oh, cartoons? Oh, they're so cute. They're nice little like, plaid. Full name Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Got, it's got my full name embroidered yeah. into the pyjamas. Yeah. Daniel Faulkner and then a big the, eagle on the back. The the, the worst part is it's um, across his butt like juicy. Oh yeah, that's good. It's, it just says da- Danny in pajamas <laughs> across his butt. Danny. And this is pushing boots. The last wish. Oh, what a cute film. I like this. Yeah, film. I thought it'd be nice to, you know, actually yeah. end Shrek Temper with something nice. I watched this a little while ago, not long after it came out, and I was like, oh, fuck, that's really good. Yeah. So mm. I just kind of wanted to talk about it. Surprisingly good film. Before I even watched it, Mac messaged me and was like, oh, you need to watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. Because I watched it and then turned to my girlfriend and said, this is the kind of movie I would do on Hair Love That Movie, but I can't do it for another 10 years till it's a movie <laughs> I used to love. <laughs> <laughs> this is an episode yeah. of Hey, uh, I currently love this movie. Hey, yeah. This movie's really good to go watch it. Yeah. Or this... whatever we said the bonus episode thing was before we used to do. Yeah. This That's movie's gonna title. go into a ta- this is gonna do a time capsule. No one's allowed to listen to this till <laughs> the hate death of the universe. <laughs> I've scheduled this for ten years from now. <laughs> yeah. God, that would be a good bet, wouldn't it? Maybe that is a yeah. podcast I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, like 10 years from now, like, did I record a podcast? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. Why have we got that one scheduled? That's weird. <laughs> um, I've been doing this for seven years. You're getting alert, like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> but yeah, I love this movie. It's very nice. Looks very good. I that... have a very controversial take about it, I think. Um, I'd never seen it before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought the animation, I was really impressed with the animation style because I was obviously on the back mm. of Shrek Forever After, yeah, which was pretty ropey looking, all things considered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, what what this, what this what movies have finally managed to do is something that we briefly delved into early in the podcast, which is that kind of mix of CG, but then making it look like... Um, like hand drawn animation in a way, so like yeah, Titan yeah. AE. Realizing like that. that you're allowed to have a bit of fun with animation, yeah. you don't have to pick like, one style and religiously stick to it. And no, yeah. like this this movie just looks nice because it looks a bit different. Like, mm, and like <laughs> the different, it uses different like styles in different scenes. Like the fighting scenes are always like that quite arty, heavy brushstroke style, which I really liked. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, we yeah. can all thank uh, Into the Spider Verse for that. Yes. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Like yeah. This this first. genuinely just looks like it's one of the universes from Into the Spider Verse the whole way through. <laughs> like that's that, and that is a compliment. That's not like a, a thing to make fun of this movie. Yeah. I was just constantly like, it looks so pretty. And as Helen said, it looks like there's just random scenes where it looks really like a beautiful like watercolor, Painted. and then other yeah. ones is just like this is like good pop art, you know? Yeah. yeah. One one tiny bit of nostalgia I did get from this film is um i i've not seen i've i've well i've, I've seen bits of the first person books film but but I've, I, it's not what i'm talking about but the um you know his like cartwheel spinny wheel jump that he does <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 um that is really that really tickles me because it's the um that's how you do the options and scene select on the shrek 2 dvd <laughs> Amazing. instead of an arrow it just it just 
put it's just him like he, and he's also the tra- that that sort of spinning cat is like the transition and that yeah. <laughs> sound yeah I, I do love when he's doing the little cart wheel as well and even that bit in the beginning fight scene where it then zooms in and he's not moving in the background is like yeah, yeah. Even just little bits like that it's like just nice little stylistic choices like um and, and when they're doing the sword fights as well there's always like just for like one frame is like the little sparks coming off the swords and everything it's just really mm. nice it is great it's a great how much one film allowed animations so much freedom yeah because uh, it's like yeah. they went toy story is successful everything has to look like toy story for a what a long time <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then it was like, oh, Frozen was the, did that, and then suddenly all of these styles opened up, and it's so cool. It's so mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. It's, it's nice just having something a bit different. And I know this is like very much a stolen from Spider Verse thing, but I like the fact that like all the individual characters or like at least factions have like their own kind of stylistic thing. Yeah, like yeah. every time Death turns up, there is like obviously tones of red and black everywhere, which just makes like that alone just set a bit more. Of like tension to it. Also, a fucked thing that you that person boots blades in this film in like the first ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, was yeah. Like, what the I fuck like, is with the start? The, <laughs> yeah. the, it was scary and sad yeah. and yeah. like yeah. Where, where, where like he he gets goosebumps and he realizes that he's essentially mortal. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he's scared and it's all about being scared for the first time. And I was like, this is not what I signed up for in a fucking puss in boots <laughs> film. <laughs> Shockingly yeah, exactly. beat. You just don't expect it from this, like, especially with how fun it starts. And mm. even, like, how funny it is when he does die with that bell just fucking falling on him out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and then it's just like, oh, yeah, no, he's he's used up all of his lives. This is it. Right? And his last life. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's amazing that they made a Puss in Boots film where uh, the main character is uh, confronting his own mortality. Yeah, and that's the theme. That's the yeah. theme, baby. That's the theme of this film: is confronting your own fucking terrifying fears. <laughs> and he's rightfully very scared of death because death in this is terrifying. Death is fucking oh, terrifying. Yeah. Scary death is fuck. so cool. Yeah. The voice actor, and I cannot remember his name for the life of me, that does death is so good in this. Like, yeah. perfectly plays that line between being like scary and like the charismatic kind of picture of death that you kind of get in these kind of stories. Like, he's, he, and it, it's just perfect for this film, right? And, like, the whole idea that you have a film as Dad's already put as a really fun, silly start, that then immediately just contrasts to, like, I hey, mean, you're going to die someday. <laughs> and then yeah. he's like, I'll be fine, I'm puss in boots. And then the doctor's like, death's coming for everyone, mate. Like, you're not getting away from this. And he's I mean, like, ah, nothing to worry about. And then he death. has another moment of arrogance after that. And then he's, as right as hell, just put out, he's like, oh, fuck, I, I'm going to die. Like, the realization between those two scenes is like massive, right? Like, it hits you like yeah. a train, and you're like, yeah. I'm watching a Shrek film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm watching yeah. a Shrek film. Like, this and is a I'm Shrek watching a, 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 a cat played by Antonio Banderas face the concept of mortality. <laughs> and one of his deaths being um, turning the oven on too high with Gingy from the Shrek movies. Yeah. yeah. That was a very cute. Death. That was a very cute little cameo. I love like, yeah. the, the cameos in this are so well done, and we'll get to the big ending yeah. scene. Um, so the, <laughs> this film isn't Shrek like in how it was made. It doesn't have like Shrek one and two style to it, but it definitely no. feels like a Shrek film. Yeah, it like, fits the universe. The really comedy nicely. was really, yeah, really funny yeah. Yeah. and really Shrek-y. Fun. Oh my god! The like, they're <laughs> just the one-liners and the stuff that's obviously meant for adults as well. Yeah, yeah, like. Um, Perito just fucking being bleeped every so often. I love it. Yes! So much. Is he so is good. so funny. He's the best. He's voiced by um, is it Harvey Guillen, the guy yeah. who's yeah. in um, What We Do in the Shadows. He's yeah. so, so funny. fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, this film. Uh, the, the Yeah, it just doesn't, it feels so and it, I like that it ha- I love that it had all of those Shrek characters because it felt like, I remember the first one, it didn't feel like a Shrek film, it felt like they were trying to make a new franchise. Mm. Yeah. And then this one properly felt like a Shrek film. Yeah. Like they I like the fact that the, the cameos didn't really overshadow it, do you mean? Like, you know, like, you could really easily just fill it with, like, oh, here's all the Shrek B players. Yeah. And just make yeah. it it's a Shrek world film, where it's just, like, just touches of the memory on the end to make you remember that is the world you're in without 
like taking away from the plot. I know. Like, so I think like, it's only if... really like Jinji and Pinocchio are the only ones that actually have a line yeah. from the ori- yeah. from the original like films, right? But then you see other people just like in flashbacks or like, yeah. randomly they appear. But if you don't like, know, they, they make sense as well. Yeah, like if you don't, yeah. if you've never seen Shrek, which you should, um, they still make sense. Like they're still yeah. like, oh yeah, that's a fictional fan uh, fairy tale character. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. they're in this film, which was how and Shrek worked. And then they even were. like in line with, I guess the timeline of it all, like when Pinocchio is there in um. When Big Jack Horner is still Little Jack Horner, and it's like, yeah, no, he would be it's... a dancing puppet at the time. It fits, it fits in and makes sense in the universe, which it is... is more than you can say about most cameos these days. It is <laughs> shocking that it makes sense. Like, it is amazing that they managed to get. I know it's only two cameos, but it's amazing they managed to get them in, and it still makes like complete sense within films that were made more than ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's like. It just be- and considering how difficult that must be with, with like Shrek three and four making no sense, it, I know like, this is a, this is going to an intense level of lore about again the Shrek films. <laughs> but the thing I really liked as well that I like one of those things as you were saying made it feel like it was a Shrek film without changing the rules or adding something crazy new to it was. The whole thing of Jack Horner explaining why he was like a bad guy, where he's like, "Well, I wasn't a fairy tale; I'm a nursery rhyme." And you're like, "Yeah." They've just in that one line established there's like a two tier citizen system. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's like that is just a fucked thing to drop randomly. Be like, "Well, no one respects me because I was a nursery rhyme." <laughs> and you're like, it, that is just a crazy world, like thing to suddenly add to the world. But it still it, makes perfect sense, right? Because it's like he doesn't get any magic stuff, though, which is yeah. why he's obsessed with magic in the film. He's like. I just was a boy who happened to have a rhyme, a rhyme about me, and then everyone knew who I was, and that's it. But also, it, it, that implies so much about the world to say, yeah. like, <laughs> there are there are fairy tale creatures. Like these fairy tales ha- are told in this world. It's just those creatures exist, and that's strange. <laughs> that feels really weird. Yeah, that's just a, a documentary. That's yeah, because yeah. that just feels really. Because then it's like, oh yeah, the talking cat. Uh, no other cats talk. Uh. He's from a fairy tale, so it's fine. <laughs> like, what? In I, I that was in Shrek, but it felt less like impactful. Yeah. This yeah, feels like, more. This film feels more like real than Shrek did. Like it's more grounded, and I think that's yeah. just because of like it's made now and films. They tend to be better. <laughs> like yeah. they tend to be more realistic now, so it just feels grounded. And then being like, and fairy tales are real. <laughs> Like, um, I mean, because Goldilocks even has that book of, like, fairy tales. Yeah. But Goldilocks in this is so fucking good as well. Oh, good Just like... <laughs> so should it's... we explain the overarching, at least, like, the premise? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're going into all these characters, and all these characters are cool. <laughs> Occasionally we will remember to do that before the end of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the premise. So the premise is, Person Boots, obviously, loses his last life. He's on his last life. He's being chased by probably the coolest version of death and there is a black forest somewhere and in that black forest is a wish yeah because a a wishing star fell and there is like one wish there but yeah it's in in this forest that you have to get through to get to it and for the first half of the movie as well like i mean it's obvious that the wolf is death but it plays it as if he's a bounty hunter just after puss in boots yeah i'd so his his dialogue the way they hint at him being death and make it Obvious, but also not obvious. It's really good. Yeah, yeah it's, he's so well written. Him just like explaining, like, "Oh yeah, I'm a bounty hunter. Uh, everybody believes that they can get away from me, but I've never met anyone that can." Yeah. Oh, that's mm. such a like a hard thing for a character to say. That's so cool. I also just like that he's a dog and this is a cat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just playing into the real like traditional battle. Yeah. I really love the start whenever Death first does turn up and Puss in Boots tries to hit him and he just bats the sword away without even yeah. looking up yeah. from the drink. And you're like, mate, you're outclassed entirely here. Like, you've not got a hope. And then yeah. when he jumps at him again and Death just, like, throws him across the bar and then just tells him to pick up his sword. And it's that point, but, like, that exact moment, Puss in Boots, like, I, there's no way of beating this character. And you're like, hey, this guy's been on screen 30 seconds. <laughs> And he's already the most intense villain that has been in any of these Shrek films yeah, by like yeah. a considerable distance. Like, yeah, like, 
Yeah, like Helena said, like the um, like one of his sickles, like just slightly cuts across in boots. I oh, know it was Mac. He said about him bleeding, and it's like, yeah. yeah, fuck, that is you would not expect that from from this, but it's that, yeah. I genuinely like, imagine if just like at one of the films you looked up and Shrek just had an open wound on his head. Like you'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck happened? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I also guess it does signify that he's on his last life. You've never seen him bleed or anything until like, yeah. until now. Mm. Mortal. And the only reason like death wants to kill him is because he's arrogant about it. Yeah, yeah, he thinks he'll live forever, so that's why he's after him. Like, uh, yeah. that's it. And that's the it only was... reason he can win. Yeah, I thought that was a bit weird was that yeah this idea was that he's he's wasted his lives so now death wants to take his last one from him prematurely it seems weirdly biteful for a I th- concept i think it's more of being arrogant and uh confident in the face of death will more likely get you yeah. killed mm. i think it was meant to be more like that because as soon as he's not arrogant that he'll never die as soon as he's not like overconfident that he'll never die and it's something else he's confident about he, he's fine yeah but See, I, I it's, thought it... it's that like i'll never die will get you killed yeah so i thought it was in a similar way to that it was like how whenever he's not confident and suddenly it's like oh they, he's gonna kill me death still comes after him right yeah and it's that thing of like either you're wasting your life by being so arrogant that you're not protecting it or you're wasting it by not doing anything because you're so afraid of death. Yeah. Mm. And it's like and that thing at the end when he stands up to it, it's like that's the only way that death will kind of let you just go at your own pace, is that you have to actually live your life, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I was and like, it's just, it's a fucking huge thing to do. <laughs> it's it gets fucking like, puss in boots just, the last <laughs> wish. To pull it off as well. Like yeah. it, it doesn't just try these things, it does them really well. Yeah. I do think there's an element of it where they're like, no one give a fuck about Puss in Boots one. We could do whatever we want with the second one. No one's gonna, no one's gonna watch it. And like, they just did what they wanted. The first one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like everyone's gonna, be like, who gives a fuck? Just do whatever we want. No one's gonna give a shit. And then they it came out, and suddenly everyone was like, "This is the best movie of the year." <laughs> like everyone lost their minds, and they were like, "Oh no, now we're gonna have to make more of these." But they went full <laughs> Spider Verse with it. They went full yeah. like, "Let's just start again." Essentially, yeah. let's just do it again, and. Yeah, no, they clearly put a lot of effort into this because of the ending. We'll get to the ending, but because there, of the ending, was, they were like... There was a... Um, uh, the, the original director was the director for Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. That sort of... It was off to a good start, even though mm, yeah. he didn't end up following the project through. Yeah. But it was full, we... like... It threw itself Oh, yeah, it. and there's a wish in a forest. Yeah, yeah, should yeah. we explain the rest of the plot because we stopped at the yeah. forest? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I'm immediately going to get sidetracked because uh, Person Boots, so his sword gets left behind and he escapes by going down a toilet and then climbs out of a sewer and I was like, he's going to get catwomanned. Like, he's just gonna... <laughs> well, he's, do you he's oh, well, Halle Berry's going to snog him and then he's going to turn into a human. <laughs> he's going to yeah, get gonna... <laughs> killed and then eaten by, have his body eaten by a load of people. Yeah. <laughs> cool. A much, much weirder ending. <laughs> a much more horrifying version of yeah. Catwoman. <laughs> Man-cat. But instead of Man-cat, um, yeah, Puss kind of finds this, like, cattery. Um, very cool uh, cattery. Puss in Boots outfits. Yeah, the woman's like... I think you'll find the I name is no Hoarder. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, and the, the whole, like, sequence of... Um, yeah, he he becomes pickles, and he's she, got like little boots and like little socks on. She's an incredible character. Yeah, I love the great. the cat owner. He's just like, is it the IRS? Yeah, <laughs> there's no cats here. Yeah, but during this time as well, yeah, um, Goldilocks and the three bears are like a crime family that are hunting down Puss in Boots. Yeah, with um, an in- incredible cast. Yes, they are so good. So it's Florence Pugh is Goldilocks. Uh, Ray Winston is the, yeah. the dad. Um, oh fuck, what's her name? Olivia, Olivia Coleman. Coleman. Yeah, Olivia Coleman. Yeah, I can't remember who the son is though. Uh, oh. But they're so they are such. Uh, Samson Kayo, Kayo, Kayo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so funny. Yeah, they're such great characters. I I remember when I watched this the first time, and I was just sitting there being like, "Who are those voices?" And I looked it up, and I was like screaming, be like, "Alan." 
that's Oscar winner Olivia <laughs> Colman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that it really threw me because it was like, what? Why? It, I mean, obviously because she thought it would be fun, but that's what? what? <laughs> I love you. You never look at Olivia Colman's like history because she's in yeah. anything. She's in. Yeah, like... she just does what she wants, right? And I think yeah. that's the best bit about her. She's like, yeah, it seems a bit of fun. I'll just do it. Yeah, and then she like, wins a couple Oscars, and it's fine. Plus, thing like she just seems like the kind of person who is like got that idea of being famous down to a T, right? Where like you're like, I don't need to be like mentally rich. I could just, I'm obviously comfortable now, so I'm just gonna do what I want to do. Yeah, I don't need to do like massive franchises constantly. Well, I mean, she did a time, didn't fun. she? She did massive. She's done masses yeah. of TV and. Like yeah, yeah, peep yeah. show and everything. So oh, yeah. but that's what I mean. Like she yeah. can probably realistically live off peep show residuals forever. <laughs> like yeah. realistically. She clearly like properly loves acting. Yeah. yeah. So she's just like, fuck it, I'll do everything and anything if I like it. Yeah, what's that I get to be like a criminal version of the Mama Bear for, for Shrek? Yeah. Hell yeah, I'll do that. I, that I, did, I, I did say during this I'm like how good you know like they used to always do for like I know this isn't a Disney production, but they used to always just do like spin off TV shows of yeah. like side characters. Like, they just did a TV show that was just Goldilocks and the Three Bears just going around doing little crimes, like a Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> style team in, the, the, like, in a fairy tale world. I'm like, that would be such a fu- fucking sick show to watch. They're just Ray Winston and back. Olivia Coleman fucking about. <laughs> do yeah. whatever they want. <laughs> Playing the piano and trying on hats. God, give me that show. <laughs> They're. They're definitely coming back in whatever oh, have future to, like. films they make because oh, absolutely. I number one, they yeah they're probably really expensive, but also they'd say yes. There's no way Olivia yeah. Coleman would yeah. turn down being in like a Shrek film. She'd love uh, it. Yeah. And also speaking of you know just generally how good this film is, even these background characters get such a fucking good arc. It's <laughs> Shrek, dude. It's yeah. Shrek, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, treats everyone like actual characters. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so while while um, well Pickles, as he's now known, is at the uh, the little cat home, he grows a beard, grows a massive beard, and I love that. Like, and then yeah, there's just a weird little dog that's pretending to be a cat so that he can blend in. Yeah. Well, so he can um, get free food, I think, and yeah, well, so he can have a family. <laughs> yeah, so he can have somewhere to live because as <laughs> when he goes into his tragic backstory, that he doesn't <laughs> seem like he's just oblivious about it. Unfazed. Like, uh yeah, he's he's great though. Um, but then the great. bears attack. <laughs> no. Yep. Yeah. Bears attack, and the the woman is brilliant still. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the I do the IRS care about? She does say the IRS, right? I thought it was like the animal people. No, like, what would be the RSPCA? But yeah, because she's yeah. I don't think they care about. Animals. I don't think I mean, as long as she's pretty... paid her taxes. Well, I don't. I, don't Americans have to do all their own taxes themselves, though? Yeah. I yeah. But yeah, she she gets kidnapped by the bears. Isn't bothered about talking bears. I mean, yeah. To be fair, like this universe does seem pretty wacky. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, the the kid is sent to look after, look for the right cat, and he just gets attacked by cats. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love the way that she's not bothered by anyone. He's like, the best line is when um, they stuff her in a piano and she just yes. says, you're going to this is the first time I've been inside a piano. <laughs> <laughs> that and he's like, me. he's really going for it. She was like, my dad can play the piano better than you. Uh, that, yeah. that, kind of, that, that joke killed me for like a good <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's my kind of humour right there. Yeah. Does make me wonder what's the backstory to some of the other cats there. <laughs> this is a sort heart, of regular yeah. occurrence. One of them killed the uh, Catwoman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of them is Midnight from Catwoman. But yeah, he over his uh, cat uh, Puss in Boots was a Catwoman. <laughs> Halle Berry <laughs> escapes. No, Puss in Boots escapes with the dog. Uh, they're like he over his um, the bear, the Goldilocks and the three bears talking about the map to the. To the wish, yes, and it's we. It, he's uh, Pussy Boots does tells you the story of the wish at the start, so yeah. we know that he knows about it. Yeah, uh, and he's like a wish, um, and they were gonna hire Pussy Boots, but he decides to double cross them. He gets his suit back out of the ground that he buried. Yeah, because they're like, oh, he's dead because he buried his suit, and they're like, because the the baby bear is a real good sniffer. Yeah, and yeah, 
Uh, so he goes off. They go off to find what's the character's name? Big Jack Horner. <laughs> Big Jack Horner. Who yeah. I thought was voiced by Nathan Lane at first, and <laughs> as it was John Mulaney. Oh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Spider-Man. Nathan Lane would have been so much better. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I thought it was what the first time I watched it, and then I was like, oh fuck, that is not like. <laughs> It felt jo- kind of weird. Like it's the his is the only voice. I was like, I know that that's the actor. Mm, yeah, the rest of the characters. He's not a voice actor. It would have been so much better if it was Nathan Lane. Yeah, but uh, he's um. So Puss in Boots breaks into, uh, like Perito's still with him. Puss in Boots breaks into there, and he's got like loads of just um, magic trophies stuff. and shit. These like so he's got like a phoenix, um, a little boat <laughs> full of people. Um, he's got the magic haunting. carpet. Yeah, yeah, he's like nailed to the floor. Yeah, I was thinking that seems very um, that seems impractical. Seems like it would be yeah. difficult to walk across. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't down. want any of these things to actually use them for anything. He just collects them to have. Yeah, he doesn't want anyone yeah. else to use them. Yeah, he's he a just water because wa- yeah. he had everything. So he well, that's his whole his whole point, right? Is he wants to have all the magic? Yes. Yeah. Because he wants yeah. it all for himself. Yeah, he's like, oh, I was, you know. Just a kid with a loving family and a and stability and a bustling huge pie empire that I could inherit. But one thing I didn't do magic. Have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one thing I didn't have was magic. One thing I didn't have was a submarine to rescue some kids trapped in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it, he's the you know maybe it's he doesn't appreciate what he already has, which no. is the you know what ties all all of them together. Yeah. yeah. Except he gets to die for it. Factory of pies. <laughs> Everyone else learns their lesson. He's also just objectively evil. Oh, he's a terrible yeah, person, absolutely. as we find out yeah. later. He's objectively yeah. a terrible, terrible he's person. He's just awful. <laughs> His conscience tells him so. Yeah. <laughs> His conscience <laughs> resigns. Yeah. yeah. That um, the conscience is Max D, my favorite character of the movie. And is is titled in the credits as Ethical Bug, which I think yes. is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. so I love good. Ethical Bug. I think ethical that might be my bug. new band name. Yeah. <laughs> ethical Bug as well has like the best voice, I think, of Arrow. It's just a, such a yeah. classic little like yeah. Jiminy yeah, Cricket voice, but it's just saying yeah. he's just like screaming costly, <laughs> doing terrible yeah. things. <laughs> oh he's god! Like, <laughs> like, no. You're gonna shoot a puppy in the face and he's like, Yes, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he's like all of our friends are dying Jack he's like I know <laughs> <laughs> you've lost a lot of men here <laughs> yeah uh, I, I love it. it's that um, old school it's a wonderful life his yeah. voice yeah yeah mm. yeah, yeah it's... almost turned Atlantic <laughs> yeah while stealing the map uh, there's another cat there who's Kitty Softpaws who I imagine is uh Maybe in the first Puss in Boots movie. Kit- Kitty's Correct. Love Paws is, is in the first <laughs> film. In the first yeah. one. Yeah. He's the, she's the love it. interest. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they're, they're, they're both seeing the map. And then Goldilocks and the three bears appear as well. And I love that Goldilocks just like picks up the bottle with the ship in and then smashes it to stab someone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just hear little screams. Like, yeah, just Go- all the little bits like that are so so good. Yeah, Florence Pugh's Goldilocks is so like aggressively <laughs> like British ruffian. Yeah. yeah. There's something really <laughs> funny about them being both like the whole family are all like cockney gangsters, but also like a real stereotypical, like lovely British family. And there's something yeah. really funny about the two things yeah. together. Where it's like it's Ray Winston doing classic Winston, but like, oh fuck you up, mate. But I love my kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like just the weirdest contrast we're, between the two. We're a family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all love each other. Yeah, I'd say it's great. Yeah. They they escape on the magic carpet and then they're trying to get out with uh, with Perito. And they're trying to, yeah, this is where they're like, oh, Perito, what's what's your name? It's like, oh, they call me lots of things, like, Perito, dog, get out, shit for brains, and it's just bleeped when <laughs> he says shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's just so out of nowhere, though. <laughs> I love when it does that, and the, a camera pans around to uh, El Kitty and Boots face. I think they're just like <laughs> horrified while you can just see the little black sensor bar popping up in front of them. Like, it's so good. <laughs> It's, I love it's so how like how happen. like sad, sorry they do feel for Perito considering because they're both sort of tough guys, yeah. Um, they don't give a shit about anyone, and like it's always you know the whole the whole thing about Puss is that he's he's alone, and yeah. That's why he, he obviously he left Salma Hayek. Is, 
out categorically there untrue. The whole <laughs> film, they're cat, like, cat. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the whole film, they're like, oh, he's a he's alone. He's always been a loner. He'll always be alone. No, he fucking it wasn't. He spent a very long time with Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> we know that for a fact. Yeah, very funny it. that what this film establishes is that Puss in Boots didn't care for Shrek or Donkey. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what the lore of this film is. He's like, I've never, se- I've never spent time with any friends, and every time he says friends, he looks right down the camera. He's like, no one I've ever cared about has spent time with me. <laughs> no, like Just I couldn't r- tell if um, you know, you know where it has like random flashbacks of his adventuring days, and there's a bit where he's riding a stallion, and I couldn't tell yeah. if that was Donkey <laughs> as a stallion. Oh, that better have been Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That better have been dog. Yeah, it's just every time they say he's a very he's a loner, it's like that's just false. Yeah, just not true. <laughs> we know um, that's wrong. But yeah, they they get to the dark forest and it's just like a, a sheet of darkness they have to walk through. And then can, can we explain the... uh, Fito's childhood? <laughs> like, oh he's, yeah, he's, he's I like, think well, it's a little bit longer that he said. Uh, yeah, it's while they're in the forest that he says about it. But yeah, he's like. I was great at hide and seek. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he always came back and he's like, and then one day they put me in a sock with a rock in it and threw me in a river. <laughs> but I, got, I chewed through and now I'm big enough and the sock fits me. So I got a nice sweater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's That's... just so innocent. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. It's like a, a great deal of this film is like incredibly dark if you pull back any subtext. <laughs> <at> yeah. <all. laughs> yeah. Like, haha, yeah. nice kids film. Wolf's a bit scary. And you're like, they tried to murder all those people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone in this film has had attempted murder all the multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's oh, just sad. I just noticed in my notes that I forgot about the other bit where there is like a swear word that's then like bleeped off. Where, um, so whoever touches the map and is after the wish, the landscape sort of changes. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be like a so challenge. Like- to get yeah. you to your wish based on your like what's difficult for you so you're like emotional foibles and yeah so yeah. it's like um and, and then yeah when perito touches it it's just like a pocket full of posies and he's like oh you've just got to stop and smell the roses yeah. and then um kitty softballs is like all i smell is bullshit and then gets like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not to wait by a plan yeah that's yeah it's because it's because pepito has no troubles <laughs> he has yeah. no no he's needs or wants. In I, this well, world. he doesn't need the wish. It's kind of like um... no, he needs the wish. He doesn't want the wish. He's yeah, the only one that could like he needs. really do with the wish. <laughs> he's the only one that really, really, genuinely quite needs the wish to make his life better. He doesn't care for it. No, he's just happy. <laughs> he does. Des- he deserves the wish. He, so yeah, I was going to say. I think he deserves the wish, but I don't think he. The whole point is that he doesn't need it none of them do yeah. they all have much more than they appreciate yeah Apart but from the, Vito, it's the fact that i think it's them. it's like in um the philosopher's stone slash sorcerer's stone sure. where he's like um he has to get the stone at the end out of the mirror and the, the thing is like if you want the stone but to have it but not to use it then you can get it right um and with this it's like yeah he he gets like because he doesn't, he wants to. He wants to get the wish because the people he's with want the wish, not because he wants to use it for himself. Yeah, yeah. So he's, then it, it's easier for him. Yeah, he's a good boy. Um, yeah, they go through the. Uh, or maybe like the the map was just so so sorry for him that they were like, actually, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, you you can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm on your yeah. side here. Yeah, <laughs> get, in this, get in this mine cart. I'll take <laughs> you straight there. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's have these plants just fucking massacre some bakers. That, by the way, so yeah, they get through fine because yeah. they're fine. Um, and then the Goldilocks ba- and that end up in there as well. The map's yeah. really cool. It's very video yeah. gamey. Um, yeah, where like their totally. little avatars appear on the map, mm. and if they yeah. st- whoever's holding it, it turns into like the environment changes. But then you can yeah sort of still see what's going on with the, uh, with everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then evil baker fucker turns up. Yeah, uh, uh, when he pulls out Excalibur and he's like, I couldn't get this rock off of it, but it still works. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jack Horner wants to, yeah, now that he's got the, he wants to use, basically, he, he packs up all his m- magical artifacts into Mary Poppins' bag. Yep. Yeah. And takes it with him and the baker's dozen, which is, they're just like, I don't yeah. know if that was a pre-established thing, but they're just like, yeah, whatever. 
Let's go with it. They're just they're just people. <laughs> they, um, yeah. They they get, he like has a obviously like a magic pumpkin uh, that he smashes and it turns into instead of it being like you know a pretty horse drawn carriage Alice Cinderella it's like a tank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they take the tank into the black forest. Yeah, and then you and then, have yeah, like the plants just start like it... her- I mean, they don't properly die because they come back for the next scene. But it's yeah, like... but it's like a genuinely quite a horrifying scene sequence yeah, where like... the the baker's does and are just kind of torn apart by the yeah. plants. One just full on becomes a skeleton, like in Spider Man. It's yeah. really kind of body horror ish. Yeah. When, like, uh, oh, and this is this is where the conscience <laughs> grasshopper yeah. comes out. Yeah, because he's clearly he collected pulled... him at some point, but he'd never used yeah. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. you wouldn't, would you? No, because he he just I think he thinks it's something else, um, and then instead he pulls out a phoenix and uses it as a flamethrower. <laughs> oh god, that yeah, is so uh, funny. <laughs> the thingy bugs like it's a phoenix. It's the most glorious creature to ever. Oh god, no! <laughs> <laughs> he chokes it, and it looks like one of those. Um, uh, dog toy chickens. Yeah. <laughs> and they just breathe fire everywhere. And he's like, oh, God, no. I love, the, yeah. Ethical bug. Oh, ethical bug. That was it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and Jiminy he's... Cricket, but for legal reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ethical bug, yeah. Well, Jimmy, Jiminy Cricket is an ethical bug. <laughs> he's, <laughs> oh, okay. They're a That's species what you mean. of. <laughs> they're, they're a species, not a one off. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's unethical, but we never got his name. But to be fair, they never asked his name. That is true. <laughs> I, I don't think Jack cared for his name. No. I don't think Jack cares <laughs> for many things. No. Uh, the scene that's just shortly after this, if not immediately after it, where Goldilocks and the three bears find like a magical version of their house is genuinely so depressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's really, like it's nice in a way, but it is like... Oh, this is I could I have figured out what's happening here and it's very sad. Oh, <laughs> uh, what they're hibernating. No, like where it's like, oh, she wants the wish because she wants a family. Like yeah. that idea yeah. where it's like she just realized she has a family. And it's the whole thing of like they're all being so kind and loving to her, not realizing that she essentially wants somebody else. Yeah, she And wants I was just watching to be like, God, that is horrible. It, <laughs> it kind of felt like the forest was trying to show her. That she yeah, doesn't yeah. need the wish. Like, it feels like the forest is trying to show everyone that they don't actually need the wish. Mm. Yeah, very much so. And that's like her one, it was desperately trying to convince her, actually. Yeah, you've got you a, family a family and they family. love you. Because <laughs> she's lying to them and she's telling them that, like, they'll have everything they ever wanted with one wish. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, it must be something like that because in the actual house, it pretty much shows exactly, like, her happiest day with them, right? Or it's yeah. like the first day with them or something, so it's like pretty blatantly just showing her like how much they care about her. Yeah, I think the... um, Yeah, she still persists with the plan. Or yeah. is planning to at that point anyway. Um yeah, I think that's it because like you have the fight between the... <laughs> everyone. Yeah. Is amazing. Oh yeah, that yeah, because um then Puss kind of runs away because he sees death in the crowd again. Yeah. Um, and then Perito gets to be a little therapy dog. Perito gets to be a therapy dog. But can we talk about the fight just quickly? Because that yeah. fight is incredible. Um, it does the animation thing where it changes styles. Mm. Yeah. And it's so satisfying. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. I um, really the effect... enjoyed the... Is this the scene where they have the... He uses the unicorn horns as well? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah it's really, really cool. Yeah. And he's like, are those yeah, unicorn yeah, horns? Like... He's like, even better, baby unicorn horns. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're twice yeah, as they're... magical and twice as sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Ethical bugs, like you're not going to shoot a puppy, are you? And he's like, yeah, in the face. Why? Because <laughs> he, yeah, because he's captured Perito. Because Perito, <laughs> oh yeah, because so Puss in Boots has a stick instead of a sword. <laughs> yes, and he's given a tiny sword, and so he throws the stick away, and Perito just jumps Runs after it. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. they were clearly like, how do we get Perito away from <laughs> the cats and just throw the stick, I guess. Yeah, just throw the stick, yeah. <laughs> Works um, for most dogs. Yeah. But also, I like that when he's got the crossbow with the horns in it, he's like, I don't know what this is going to do. <laughs> yeah, it just explodes people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the fight happens. Uh, Puss doesn't mm. really want to fight because he's terrified of dying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then he sees death. Because he gets a bit confident, he sees death. And then runs away in fear. 
Which is also an important character point, right? Because at that point, Kitty's been like, you always abandon us. Yeah. But she thinks it's because he's being selfish. Whereas this time, it's genuinely he's just terrified. Well, he has a panic attack, basically. Yeah. In this then, one, yeah. and, and he's like, so he runs and Farito obviously chases after him. He's like, what happened back there? And but Farito, like, comforting him is the cutest thing. Especially because, yeah, yeah. like, earlier he jo- jokes about being his, his like, friend. He's like, mm, he's like, therapy dog. Yeah. <laughs> and Sam Hayek's character is like, we, you do need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he's talking to Farito about um, that he essentially left Kitty at the altar. Yeah. Um, oh, Perito takes, takes the yeah. longest time. Takes the longest time for Perito to like work out what he's insinuating, though, and he's just like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, oh, yeah, oh, you didn't." And that, yeah. I think obviously <laughs> that's for the kids, but it like the ones that you know are a bit slow and hadn't quite figured that out yet. Hmm. Um, but it was oh, it really tickled me that it was just yeah. You know. And I, I like how not long after Kitty's like, "Yeah, I didn't show up either. It's fine." Yeah. <laughs> like, well, He's explaining, I can't remember his exact reason for not going to the altar, but it wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. It was like he was a, scared. He, he just said that he, yeah. was, he was really scared. Yeah. Um, but in and like when a, he's scared, he runs away. But in like a selfless way. I, I swear it was like, it was, he didn't want to waste something, that like he didn't want to waste her time. Because, yeah, because she turns up and overhears it and realizes that like, he didn't just abandon her, he had a reason for it. Yeah. Which is the, the forest... Showing her that she has exactly what she wishes for <laughs> right in front of her. Because this is a magical oh, yeah, forest. She does wait until he apologises, though, to tell him that she didn't turn up either. Oh, oh yeah, because that's not her problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the, the, she's probably quite relieved, actually, that he didn't turn <laughs> up. Or yeah. she's lying. Or she's lying and she was there and she's trying she's to saving save face a bit of a face. Because yeah. that's what she, she can't trust anyone. Her problem right. is she can't trust anyone. So so then, um, yeah, Goldilocks has the map, so they sneak in to get it. Um, and I like how, like, the map kind of ends up, like, it gets grabbed by Kitty, but then because it gets knocked away, it kind of stops in a weird half-and-half half state. Yeah, yeah stopped. that was cool. We had the little floaty, yeah. floaty bit. Yeah, And then so they it's... fucking dance on each other's feet to climb up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that that makes no sense, and that the um, even Goldie is just like, what? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, that was genuinely one of my favorite jokes. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <just> after. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, it ends with Goldie has Perito. Puss gets the map, but he ends up like in the cave of Lost Souls, and um, yeah. they kind of like separate. Yeah, because he he's, like, he's I'll, touching I'll the map. Perito. He's he's touching yeah. the map, and it so it turns into his his sort of scary ice cave of Lost Souls. Hmm. And he's and like, he's well, I've, I've got it. Wives, yeah. yeah. So you go and get Perito. Yeah. <laughs> Just Gold looks in the bears talking to Perito, and um, I, I think it's the kids like, oh, you're nothing but just a low rent Cinderella, and they start arguing, and Perito's like, oh, it's my turn, and they're just more bleeping. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it absolutely decimates all all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so much bleeping. And then he says, like, oh, I wish I had a family like this. You guys are great. <laughs> and then <laughs> the next time they look, he's just like a stuffed toy because Kitty's managed to swap him out. <laughs> yeah, swap him out for like a pine cone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and while the funny thing is happening, uh, Puss in Boots is having an existential crisis. Oh, yeah. Just the, like, all of his lives are like, oh, no, yeah, it's fine. Just go alone. You, you, yeah, fine. you don't need that. You're a, yeah. a, a strong, independent hero. And then... Death oh, just straight up fucking jump scares you in this scene as well. So scary. <laughs> I I really was like, this feels like a genuine like high end <laughs> video game level we're watching here. Mm-hmm. Where like Person Boots is being faced with all of his former lives, all telling him what he did wrong. Then he turns around and all of a sudden there's a huge jump scare of a fucking wolf that's also yeah. death there. And I was like, oh, this is an end of level boss. Like Person Boots <laughs> is about to die. <laughs> I was like. This is gonna be really bad. What's about down there? But like, yeah, that's so good. And that reveal where he, where Boot Post realizes who he is, and he's like, "That's right, I'm death." And he's yeah. like, "No, no one gets away." Like, yeah, that's so like, good. You didn't value your previous lives, so uh, when he's, he's, it, and Death's just going around smashing them all. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "You had eight more goes than everybody else, and you wasted every one of them." 
Yeah, yeah, and he's walking around like I was there with all of them. I was there, yeah. all of them, and you laughed in Death's face, like ah, oh. okay. Like Death isn't a villain in this. He's a he's a bad guy, but he's not like villainous. He's just doing his job. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I'd say he's a he, bad guy because he's decided to change the rules. He doesn't like the rules, so he changes he, them, which is pretty bad guy y. He hasn't. I don't think he's changed the rules. Yes, I he has, because he's... he's killing. Death isn't supposed to do that. They're supposed to die, and then he How collects do you know them. That? How do you know that's not the rules, though? How do you know that like death doesn't turn? He, he hasn't killed that... him any of the other times. It wasn't. He death could have put, like... all... <laughs> he could <laughs> put yes. all that shellfish in that food. Yeah. He could have cut that bell. We didn't see. <laughs> but he said, like, <laughs> he said, death was there. Like he was there. So like, clearly, whenever Percy Boots is about to die, death turns up. He's just never noticed him before because all he's ever done is care about himself. That's a line in the film. Yeah, but he's. I I think. But death doesn't cause those deaths. No, but he like he also doesn't cause any of the deaths here. He's just trying to like he's just threatening him because Do when you, he but becomes... he's got the sword and he draws blood on him and he's gonna tr- and he's trying to yeah, kill him. Yeah. But he doesn't actually kill him. He's threatening him because I he's think being it's... overconfident. I think it's fair enough because Puss got eight extra lives that nobody yeah. else gets, and he's like, "Well, all other cats you've, do." You, you've got the die loads of times. I'm killing yeah. you now. <laughs> right? You've got your chance. <laughs> Normal cats don't waste them like he did. Yeah, well, I suppose normal cats also don't really have the ability to to not waste them because they're yeah. just cats. Is it the same death? Is it the same death for cats as it is for everyone else? Fuck! Like, it's very funny to imagine death turning up in just your house, just being like, "I've come to kill your cat." <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? And he's like, he's been fucking sitting about doing nothing, eating nine of tens. I'm gonna kell him. He's wasted his life. Like, it's a cat. <laughs> What do you want him to do? <laughs> it's like, you could have been a, a superhero. It's, it's like, you have no idea. There's a severe wage crisis in this country. That cat's done fuck all. <laughs> you're like, that seems very unfair to put that on the cat. <laughs> that's not the cat's fault. It's I also like, like, don't find it funny a, that that's what death cares about. Yeah, it's like, it's <laughs> only he's four, not contributing it's like, to society. <laughs> He's yeah. like, there's only, he's only lost four. It'll be back tomorrow. But just, I'm just taking one to be safe. <laughs> Just, you know, kick him up the arse a bit. Get him moving. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, he runs away. Um, yeah, runs he runs away, away cause he, the, to the wishing um, star bit. Um, well, yeah, yeah Goldilocks like... snaps at the bears and he's like, oh, I want a proper family. And, yeah. and the mama bear's just like, if it's something that will make you happy, we'll we'll get you that wish. <laughs> like, that... still caring so yeah. much. Yeah, that really fucking good killed mom. me. Yeah. That yeah. fucking killed me. Whenever she's like, if that will make you happy, we'll do it. And I was like, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. she just doesn't get it. I was like, why does no, Goldie I... not get it? <laughs> I'm like, that's the only thing. And then, yeah, Kitty Softballs is annoying because she thought she could trust um, Puss. Um, but and she sees him running right away, away, like full yeah. pelt with the map, and thinks obviously he's just trying to get away from them instead of the fact that he's outrunning death. Yeah, she's yeah. like, the, your only one true love is your legend. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then they all arrive at the big like star battle arena. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the end fight of Again, Mary. Yeah, and it Again, floats Mary like a ballerina. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is Smash yeah. Brothers. It's a Smash Brothers level. Yeah. And it's just like a full-on standoff between like Jack um, with the little bug, uh, the the Goldilocks and the bears, and then yeah, like oh, because Jack has like one last chef, one last baker in them because he killed all the other ones uh, crossing a gorge. Oh yeah, because he was just walking over them. Yeah, and he's like, he looks out at the one that's left and goes, "Do you talk? Do you chat? No, good. Come yeah. on." Because in the ending fight, she's getting murdered, and he's like, "I don't care." Yeah, she gets thrown through the wall and kind of disappears as the kind of, this is what happened, you know, this is the character you don't care too much about, so that you know what would happen if anyone else goes through the wall. Yeah, but she's just like, help me, I need your yeah. help. Oh, God. And he just doesn't care. It, death, then, the yeah, deaths the... in this film are genuinely horrifying. Yeah. And then, like, when Baby Bear's, like, been knocked over and they're all trying to rescue him, and then Goldie, Goldilocks chooses rescuing him over getting the wish, and it's like, oh, She's, like, dude. halfway through getting the wish as well. Yeah. She's yeah. so yeah. close. Oh, and that, she that realizes, seems so good. That seems um, so emotional. Meanwhile, Jack has poison apple bombs. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, and he gets kicked into the um, bag of <laughs> He gets knocked into the bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and then so... Death turns up. Because he starts getting confident again. <laughs> Yeah, because Perito manages to get the wish, and it's like, here you go, like, plus it's fine. Like, I'm good. My one life is enough for me. Like, but if you want this, here. 
and even even Selma Hayek is like um, or Kitty Softpaws is like yeah you yeah I didn't realize like you you can have this wish if you you can have this wish if you need it yeah like you 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 need it I don't I I love the running joke of death is not metaphorical like yeah. I love that uh like when death turns up and he's explaining who he is he's like I'm not a metaphor I'm not I'm not I don't have any deeper meaning I'm death i'm actually death and then uh soft pause later is like i thought you meant like a metaphor when you said you were running away from death <laughs> it's like no <laughs> literally that's literally it oh yeah but that um, end fight's fucking great yeah he, he just throws plus his sword and he's like right come on then the end fight has legitimately the only moment i think of last year of cinema that gave me chills which is when person boot says pick it up <laughs> Yeah, I was like, "Fuck, that's sick!" <laughs> like, legitimately, like I was watching like the greatest action film of all time. It's like just based on the fact that at the start, he was, like death was so arrogant fighting him, but then Boots mm -hmm. managed just to knock one of his scythes away, and instead yeah. of fighting him with one side, he knocks it back and just says, "Pick it up." And then death just is like, "Oh, you're you're ruining this for me. <laughs> you're ruining this. This is about to be fun, and you've been." Uh, it's just like him so angry it's like a perfect like summarization of the two characters right yeah because then he's like i can never defeat you but i'll never stop fighting for this life and so death's like yeah good that's you the lesson you need to learn your lesson yeah. i'm out yeah. and I, it's, I like it i like it the way at the way death still is kind of like i will see you again puss and he's like i look forward to it <laughs> like, that's such just a, death, a like. great yeah. line to lean leave on yeah. yeah such a good line to leave on yeah Oh, it's uh, that Jerry. That last fight, I was like, whole time I was watched, I was just how like the time of my life. <laughs> like, I was, yeah. like, this is so I was good. so like, gripped at the end. Yeah, yeah. I actually, and, and this is a, a real indictment of the current um, world that we live in. But I watched that clip on TikTok before I saw the film, and I immediately called my girlfriend. I was like, "We're watching this now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw clips of of death, and I was like, I need to watch this film. Yeah, because yeah. it came uh, out. I, I, and I the only like... adverts for side scene were on the sides of the buses. Wow! <laughs> oh, classic! It's very funny how I saw the sides of buses adverts be like, it's coming out in ten days, and I was like, I've watched this. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's out a long time ago in America, like a yeah. month before it came out here. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, the uh, last fight scene's so good. Uh, I yeah. was like, it's just a, a real lovely bit of character work for us to learn. Not actually defeat death, because no one can, but like death still drifts back to him, like, like, it is what it is, we'll meet another time. I was like, that is like the perfect way to end a film that's about mortality, right? Uh, or, like, and, and you can't guy outrun it. The bank. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how all deaths work done, yeah. as you know. <laughs> Yeah. You're gonna have buy a car and survive, and then you see the giant. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it all time. Yeah, because um in inside the uh bag, like um Jack had packed the like eat me things from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. So he just climbs out and he's fucking huge. Magical snack. And he was already pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> well he thought uh he thought he'd come out naked, but luckily his clothes grew with him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then weird... Carito goes up and is like no, stop, stop, don't do the wish. And he manages to do the cute, the cute eyes. Look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Selma like... Hayek had been training him up while um while they were on yeah. like their their nice like lazy river part of the journey. Yeah. yeah. And the guy's like, Oh, that's so cute, doesn't mean anything yeah. to me. He's like, That's fine, I was just buying some time for team friendship. And then Sam uh Puss in Boots and Kitty Softballs do what's the thing that Kit um Puss in Boots did at the beginning which both times it happened in the movie made me feel awful. Oh, it's bad. It's <laughs> the just Spanish bad splinter watch. of just the rapier straight under the thumbnail. <laughs> it's oh, awful. it's bad. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. There's um, no need for it. And they end up like they they all realize while well, fighting him, they're like, none of us need the wish, so they destroy it. Yeah. And then yeah. Jack kind of gets sucked into the ground. Yeah, they destroy it so that Jack can't cast his wish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the 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 well, they rip it up. What actually destroys it is Ethical Buck and the Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he almost hooks it back together and he just burns yeah, it. Yeah, there's a little Phoenix piece missing. Burns the last bit and flies yeah. away. I quit. I resign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, so bear, the bears, like, work out that there's a, a pie factory 
yeah, still they can like they, they yeah. can start running like a proper family business. Yeah. And then ethical bug is like, I think it's time we start talking about ethical <laughs> business practices. Uh, oh man, I then, love ethical bug. And then it's like, oh, team friendship are now wanted, and they stole a boat. And where do they go, they, Dom? The fucking music, <laughs> like I. I didn't notice it the first time I watched this, but having just watched all four Shrek movies, the fucking music oh, starts and you're like, oh shit, that's the Shrek music. It's the Shrek <laughs> music all the way through the film. Yeah. Like, it's the Shrek's uh, like piece all the way through. It's great. Mm. It, um, like, fully then, yeah, it kind of a Shrek film. And then shows that they're sailing to far, far away. You're far, far away for they're more like, oh, adventures. It's time for new adventures with old friends, and it's like, Shrek's fucking back. <laughs> and they're making a Shrek 5. <laughs> yeah. And if any movie could give me hope for another Shrek film, it's I'm this. I'm so scared of Shrek 5. Yeah. I legitimately said that the people I was watching this with the first time, I honestly think because Shrek has a horrible habit of parodying things that are like 10 years out of date, I really fear the next film he's going to do a um, Avengers Assemble moment with all the cast <laughs> of like, these films. <laughs> We're like, he's going to be in a big fight and you're just going to hear on your left track and it's going to be puss. <laughs> it's gonna well, the thing is, and I don't want to be rude to the two of them, the two stars of Shrek are not in anything anymore. No. <laughs> like, like imagine Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy doing a somewhat serious, like, still comedic film about mortality. It's Even just Cameron never going to happen. He doesn't do anything really either now. I d- yeah. yeah, but they're all still alive, so they can do Shrek 5. Yeah. I'm sure they'd come back for Shrek 5. Or, at what the end is? of the day, it, it is just Mike Myers doing a Scottish accent. It could be anyone. No, it needs to be Mike Myers. I don't think you could do Shrek. Without. It'll be AI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but people said that People said that about Wallace in Wallace and Gromit, and he, the, uh, the voice actor was absolutely fine. It's I think, no, just I think a voice. I think that's different. I know, because it's, it is Mike Myers doing a Scottish accent. Like it's, it's Mike Myers. And I don't think you can have another donkey and it still feel like donkey. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like, I, well, I think... Donkey doesn't have to be in it. All they've sort of established is that it's Puss in Boots and Shrek. Well, yeah. Donkey. Well, to be fair, they've not actually so... said Shrek's in it. It's just far, far away. Yeah. No, it's it Shrek, they're far making far Shrek Five. Yeah. They've announced they're making Shrek Five. Yeah. Uh, and they're making a Donkey TV series. Oh Christ! I, Which, uh, I don't the like. Donkey no TV need... series is going to be like Andor. It's really fucking gritty and realistic. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> There's no need for a Donkey TV series. There's like I can see Shrek Five being alright. Yeah. No I just TV hope TV. that they do take some of this um, Illumination Studio style they have to, animation right? and don't just do aggressively furry yeah. um, <laughs> person boots like they did in in, ha- in Happily Ever After or whatever it was called Shrek yeah. Forever After. Yeah. Because no. they looked awful. This can be... go one way. It's just yeah. called well, S5. You say... No, <laughs> you say that, Dan, but it would be an inc- entirely Hollywood thing to be like, well, the kids love the Shrek, so we're just going to make it all aimed at kids and not include any of the real lore of Puss No, I think like... they should, uh, the entire movie should just be the movie Fast and Furious 5. Oh, but it's Shrek. <laughs> Mm, Shrek is good be, act, but... uh, Vin Diesel in the movie. I, I is Fast they... Five the one where Puss and Boots says Daddy's got to go to work? Uh, no, <laughs> or is that's that... uh, Furious Six. So... I see. Fa- uh, Fast Five is the one where at the end they have the giant vault being dragged around by cars. And yeah, sick. that's good. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> I don't. Think it's not, but it. it's just pirate ships. <laughs> yeah. I don't just think they can make a super sh- kid-friendly Shrek. Shot yeah. for shot remake of Fast Five, but it's Shrek. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> This is like that Muppets question, but it's like, what movie? But every character is played by the cast of Shrek. <laughs> Instead of, like, one character still human. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's I mean, that is absolutely something Shrek would just parody and act like it's not yeah. that. <laughs> they get to the volcano pretty quick in Shrek, so it, it's over. Oh, yeah, it's only around the corner. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. It's all good, yeah. yeah. Except if they're in Far, Far Away. <laughs> It, uh, but only in the second movie. Only in, it yeah, gets a lot closer. Yeah. It, it it's proper cool. Game of Thrones is it at the end where it's like, nah, it's fine. It's just it's just there. It's, it's, it's cool. 
You only need one scene of uh, people moving. Ooh, they they have unlocked fast travel. <laughs> yeah. So this film, way better than we expected, right? Yeah, real good. Um, like, I'd yeah. heard good things about it, and then even when I watched it, I was like, yeah, no, that, that deserves the praise it's getting. It's a good film. Yeah. I think it, 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 I mean, I didn't find it life changing. I thought it was nice. I thought I had a, I had a pleasant time watching it. Um, I thought it was heavy for a kids' film mm. and quite scary for a kids' film. But it, it still it felt it's it's not it, it it's not close to how I felt watching Shrek Two. Oh no! I think this is way better. I think this is way better. Really? Yeah. This is this Have is my Have you watched Shrek Two recently? I watched it a, a week after Dad asked me to do this episode in preparation oh, okay. for saying this. <laughs> I think this is the best Shrek film by a distance. Well, hmm. By a star. No, I, 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 I uh, politely disagree. I mean, I'd say I, that this is at least Shrek 1 level. Yeah, yeah, I think it's Shrek 1 level. but I think this is almost as good as Shrek 2. I think it's almost. I don't think it's quite. Doesn't like, have as good a, a musical number, but yeah, I, I was going to say though, where's the, where's the musical number? <laughs> yeah, I did like. It's American not the star, but it's not. Star, I, yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's not pop. It's not. There's no pop culture references that like no. out of if they've just if they just jammed all star in there at the end when they saw far <laughs> far away, it would have been a perfect film. If Ooh, whoever the camera it? panned over to far far away, so it, 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 it would have been just, perfect. As it pans over, yeah. it's like some, and then just cuts the credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would have been it. That would have been it. I don't even play the song. It's just some, and then it just cuts to like the score playing over the credits. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a ten out of ten movie. That would have been yeah. an eleven out that of ten movie. Been, that would. I mean, as it stands, I would I would actually give this movie a nine out of ten bleep. Bleeps from uh, Carito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, yeah, I really enjoyed this a lot. I, think I, I agree. Haven't... I think nine bakers dozen. <laughs> nine bakers getting murdered in horrific nine ways. So it's no, I only learnt my time tables up to twelve. <laughs> hundred and seventeen out of ten. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also give it a hundred and seventeen out of ten. <laughs> Uh, I was—I mean, this is Jerry, probably my favorite animated film outside of the Spider Verse film. So I'm gonna, it's nine and a half. Um, pur- very awful looking purple thumbs out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah I, I didn't think it was. I, I thought it was fine, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna give it eight baby unicorn horn missiles <laughs> out of ten. Yeah. Um, I feel like Unicorn, it had that weird Shrek vibe in that the whole unicorn thing feels a bit past A now. Yeah. Um, hmm. Like, kids are mostly over unicorns, I think, now. Yeah, it was bright and colourful, and it was a lot better than most kids' films. Yeah. yeah. It's better than Shrek 3 and 4, and that's what counts right now. <laughs> Absol- oh, yeah, good palate cleanser. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A beautiful end to Shrek, Tamber. Yes. I, I'm glad yes. that we've been able to have a nice little uh, li- little bit of relief <laughs> at the end of Shrek Timber. Death has come for Shrek Timber and yes. we have not defended it. No. <laughs> <laughs> he has been whistling in our ears and he has come to cut, cut Shrek Timber from our lives. <laughs> yeah, but has he? Because Shrek is coming back. Shrek's back, yeah. baby. <laughs> in Shrek. Fun. Shrek has learned to value its life. <laughs> it has been granted an amnesty. Yeah, I can't wait to while out. Death was distracted by trying to hunt down Puss in Boots, Shrek yeah. has dragged Came itself back. out of the underworld. I want to <laughs> see Shrek meet Death. I don't know why, but I just want to see what happens. Fuck, that's what's going to be. That's the bit that's going to happen in that um, Avengers scene where all of them appear that there's Death and Shrek's going to just literally go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and Boots go like, go like, yeah, it's Death. It's like, <laughs> like, that's his name? No, that's him. That's literally Death. <laughs> I really, I actually, Shrek, because he's in our team, we've probably automatically won this. We probably don't need a part to be honest. <laughs> not like a metaphor or anything. No, that's just death. <laughs> yeah, that's that's no. death. It's fine. Yeah, uh, it's all good. The, uh, okay. now, now that Prince Charming has got the Infinity Stones, you know, we. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I really hope they don't do that. <laughs> I'm fine with everyone turning up. That's cool. Don't do the whole Infinity <laughs> Stones bullshit. <laughs> just bring the fairy godmother back and have her do another number. 
Yeah. I'll do another Bonnie Tyler song. We're all yeah, kids. if anyone deserves to come back from the dead, dead in Shrek, it is mm. Fairy Godmother. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Can you imagine that reveal of like, um, oh, it's a Fairy Godmother? Especially if it's just like a few bubbles start coming together. Because mm. she yeah. just turned to bubbles, right? Yeah. Yes, she does. Yeah. Or like she's wearing like there's a, like a mystery figure wearing a really dark, uh, heavy cloak, but then you just see like the wisp of but some like, red, um, red, uh, glittery satin yeah. peek like through, really, and you're like, oh, but like a really tall back. cloak. The entire yeah. film, you think it's like this really tall, like looming creature takes it off. It's just her fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can have it where, like, the cloak looks very much like the cloak Death wears, do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And you can finally have Death appear and everyone thinks, oh, Death's come for Shrek or something, and then he's like, you've got to help me. <laughs> and he's like, "Someone, someone's figured out how to reverse it. <laughs> and, like, Death's like, I'm panicking, and then the yeah. fairy gobbler's there. And that's how you tie the two stories together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shared We've villain. done it. Well done, everyone. Nice. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> we can, yeah. Sleep we, easy now. We can. I'll email now. Michael right after this. <laughs> We can, we can. Michael now... Myers, to be clear, not. Me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, like, he's right there. Well, it's a bit formal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just message us on Discord. Yeah. Are you going to email me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I had you email after this, like, hey, Mike, can you please email the script to Michael Myers? Please, thank you. <laughs> you I'll find his email, email, I guess. <laughs> and I do, and to be clear, I don't mean the guy from Halloween, so I just realized who Michael Myers is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you thank God you said because I would have emailed the villain from... Yeah, I would have emailed the fictional character from the Halloween film. Well, it's a very, very, very different movie. Like, oh death's coming for you. Yes, we know. You're aware. He's very slow. <laughs> and he looks a but bit like William Shatner. Persistent. God is he persistent. Like a melted William Shatner. <laughs> uh, well I, I think we can end Shrek Tamber looking forward to the future of Shrek. Um, so, October. Yeah, <laughs> it could so go either way. Yes, <laughs> I guess we'll see. So with that, I've been Dan. I have been Michael. I've been Helena. <laughs> and I'm still Mac in the hat. <laughs> and Mac in the hat. Where can people find you? Apart from uh, quite a few episodes of uh, this show now that you've guested on, some would call you our fourth Beatle. Um, if the Beatles <laughs> never really took off. That seems de- that seems derivative of another podcast. I like to think I'm the fourth member of the boy band Blue, <laughs> but crucially, I'm not Lee Ryan because I think he's a, a bad man now. <laughs> no, I, I mean, let's face it. I think you're the Ringo star of this group because you've mainly bought us just some weird, colourful shit. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I like thinking... Ringo. I'll tell if... you where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can listen to me on my beautiful podcast, What the Flick, which is on a brief break because I was very sick and then Matt moved house, but it's back this weekend. So it probably actually it'll be back two days ago <laughs> based on where this comes out, I assume. Uh, anyway, the point Friday, is... I think. Yeah. Oh, well then two days from now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't it's coming out this weekend. Just It'll be back, right? We just were busy. I'm sorry. It's going Keep refreshing back. the feed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Refresh it every day. What the Flick, we... Look at a movie poster and try to predict the entire plot of the movie and see how close we get. Um, and then also on Twitch at the Macaroni Prince, if you care about that, um, which most people don't, and that's fine. It's it's a very confronting form of media. I'm not brave enough to do Twitch. <laughs> no, that's fair. Or <laughs> organized enough to do Twitch. Like it's just a lot of me shouting, so I understand. <laughs> That's what we have the podcast for. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, just if if Dan, if you could just edit this where you just put up just my feed and nothing else, <laughs> that's more or less what my Twitch stream is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with with some royalty free EDM music on it. <laughs> uh, well, you can find this podcast on social media at Hilton Pod. That's at H I L T M Pod. Uh, we're on Discord if you want to come and chat to us about fussing boots. I guess what what you think is going to happen in Trek Five. Um, and uh, what movie do you want Shrek casted? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll, uh, that's good. we'll do them all. <laughs> Maybe. Um, we do also have a Patreon where you can support the show. Um, we've got like bonus episodes up on there. There was a quiz that came out not too long ago, which was um, good. Fuck, is it a good quiz? Yeah. Um, it was a terrible quiz, but it was fun to do. Oh, yeah. Like this podcast. <laughs> so... <laughs> What, well, what are we doing for that? <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, do you want to support our podcast with money? It's shit. <laughs> like, it's not great. Um, but yeah. Well, if anything, do... you got buyer's remorse. Yeah. <laughs> are we going to do um, anything specific for this 
bonus episode. <laughs> yeah, we use your money to make um, a wish. Shrek Five with uh, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, there we go. He's bringing it back. He's going to play Death. We're going to recast <laughs> Death. <laughs> Actually, he might be good at that. That could work. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You say he might be because Nicolas Cage might be good at every role. <laughs> yeah. Just, it just depends on the day. It is a real <laughs> throw of the dice. Yeah. Kind of up to him, really. Yeah. Some. My rat's uh, scrotumless bottom is so soft now. I hope this is staying in. I <laughs> 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 uh, just put this in the end. No context. <laughs> <laughs> just, just that. Yeah.